delay. It's wild. <laughs> wild. All oh. right. Well, already people are asking about this guitar. We will be talking about it. Uh, of Absolutely. course, welcome to the stream, episode four of the guitar riff. We're going to be talking about guitars and riffs and guitar riffs and, like I said, this guitar that I'm holding in my hand. Yes. We're going to be giving <laughs> this guitar away to one of our members, which is exciting. Yes. Uh, so if you are a guitar member, uh, at the end of the stream, we'll do a giveaway right. for this guitar. We'll send this off to you. Yep. Um, it is the uh, Nex G, Nex G, I believe. Uh, yeah, N-E-X G. Uh, it's by Enya. Correct. Which... You know, it's a brand that's obviously doing some pretty inventive stuff. I've never encountered a guitar quite like this before. No, there's a lot of interesting features on this. Like, yeah. it's got a uh, built-in speaker uh, on the side, which is really interesting. So you can play it without an amp, which is really neat. Yeah. Um, and it, uh, it has a built-in tuner, uh, the Bluetooth speaker that's in it, and then it's a uh, five built-in effects. So we heard some of the Ottawa and the delay in the jam yeah. up front. And that's that's good because you know oftentimes I'll be playing with an acoustic guitar and I'll be thinking, damn, I wish there was an auto wah built into my acoustic guitar. And I'm not being facetious; I'm being serious. I wish. Facetious for sure. I'm being facetious for <laughs> sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, so this is from Enya. Uh, make sure. And yeah, it's it's like a carbon filter. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. Why did I say filter, <laughs> guys? It's not like that's what the notes said. <laughs> uh, car yeah, I can read. Carbon fiber guitars are great, especially if you live in kind of like a climate that moves up, like temperatures move up and down quite a bit. Carbon fiber is a lot more solid throughout the year as opposed to yeah. um, straight wood. True, um, true. Yeah, and it has they have four different colors, which is really neat. Uh, including this one, guys. Including this white one. Uh, and uh, we will have a link for this Enya guitar below the stream uh, after. So you can definitely yeah. check that one out. Yeah, um, and um, that link below... It's like a whole guitar bundle, and it comes with, you know, a hi-fi monitor earphones, travel case, wireless microphone, here. guitar strap, got, charger cable. We got the microphone or the headphones here, which are pretty neat. Uh, those are cool. Yeah, um, and there's a head. What? There's a microphone. That's there's what I'm a microphone. Say. Yeah. Right here. Straight up. And Straight up mic. Let's see if we can get this to work. Hello, 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 and you can be a one-person band. <laughs> with just this is crazy. What with the? just one instrument, you can do everything. With built-in <laughs> effects. This is awesome. Wild. <laughs> Maybe I'll just sound this guys myself. hate him because <laughs> you won't need a sound guy if you have this guitar because you can. You play are guitar. the sound. You are the. You sound are the guy. sound person. It's like yeah. a three-in-one. It's crazy. That's cool. Um, but you do get a cool little case. It's kind of behind me here. It's a really actually. Pretty sweet carrying case. There's a little charging station for it here, um, and uh, so it can power all the built-in effects. It doesn't need to be constantly plugged in. Uh, built-in tuner. Uh, Enya also makes some ukuleles too, uh, so you can definitely check them out. A really cool yeah. company. So thanks, Enya, for sending this our way. It's a really neat instrument. Do um, you want to play through a couple of the other sounds? Yeah, why there? not? So built-in delay. Wild. It is wild. Okay, here's the rock fusion setting. So built in overdrive. Yeah, and this is not no effects at all, this or and through anything else. This is all guitar. Yeah, this is all, all through the guitar. All the, all the so guitar. you can just literally plug into a plain speaker. A blank speaker. Oh, and that has delay as well. Yeah, super cool. And, and to answer a question from the members chat, it does plug into an app. There is Ayla yeah. is plugged in. Um, so we, you, you do have that option. There's a bunch of outputs um, that you can do for like headphones and, and uh, quarter inch output. So it's a really neat yeah. guitar, a lot of cool um, choices there. So we'll be giving that away. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube and you want to participate in maybe winning this guitar, you can head on over to guitario.com slash trial, sign up for our seven day free trial and come hang out uh, on the member side. It's great. It is great. Yeah, and our YouTube audience won't be left empty handed either. Uh, we will be giving away an annual membership. Uh, for Guitario uh, yeah. towards the end of the stream, so you just gotta hang out towards the end. Um, excellent. Look at how futuristic this looks. I know. That's this is, wild. This is the future guitar right here. Now I'm picking up a past guitar. It's true. It's a past guitar. It's a past guitar. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, Ayla, what are we talking about today? We are talking about. Ooh, sorry guys. Nice. <laughs> Not that. That wasn't my answer. I'm gonna be clear. We're talking about uh, virtuosity, and what we mean by that is. Being a highly technical player 
is that important? Is that not important? You know, what does it mean to be a successful guitar player? That's the big question that we're going to be trying to answer today. And again, I don't there. I don't think there's any objective answer to this question. No. Um, it's so dependent upon the way you look at music and frankly, the way you look at the world in general and you know what values you have and what success means and what music means to you and yeah let's talk about it i guess i'll pose the question to you first do you think virtuosity matters i think virtuosity i i would say it's very stylistically mm. dependent and mm -hmm. i think this will tie into with um virtuosity and like uh, i think people associate it with like natural talent a lot you know sure. um so like oh i could never play virtuosically because i don't have the natural talent to do so mm -hmm. um and i think there are people of course who are inclined towards um you know, the um, playing the instrument, I suppose. There's some people that have maybe a natural inclination towards it, but I don't think uh, it's off limits for anybody. Mm -hmm. I think anybody can work towards achieving the technical facility you need. Um, it just, some might take longer than others, but I don't think that there's like, because it's not gonna take you a year, doesn't mean you shouldn't try or mm -hmm. anything like that. Everybody's on their own journey. Um, so I find, um, for me, again, back to the virtuosity side of things, I think it's, um, it's very stylish. I, I think if you're going to play like 80s hair metal, virtuosity is kind of important there. Because mm -hmm. if you are in a Van Halen cover band, you need to be able to rip a couple of solos or at least uh, some specific lines from, from those. Um, and, uh, but if you're playing like blues music, there's a lot of blues shredder, like Stevie Ray Vaughan was very virtuosic. But yeah, I don't Joe Bonamassa. Yeah, 100%, you know? And I, I don't think it is a requirement to be a stellar guitar player. You don't need to be a virtuosic, like, monster guitarist to be a good blues guitar player. Yeah, yeah, you certainly don't need to have the technical ability of, I don't know, Guthrie Govan to right. play, you know, a soulful blues solo. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that leads me to my personal stance where I think technique only serves as a language and a set of tools to help you express yourself on the instrument. So exactly what you said, you know, stylistically dependent or just in general dependent upon what your goals are as a musician. Uh, I guess it's easy to speak about myself because I, I am me. <laughs> For are example, you? am I? Oh, that actually is an existential question too. But uh, I am me in this scenario, let's just say. Okay, we'll say it for today. <laughs> for today, at the very least. For this hour, for the very least. But yeah, I have an amount of technical ability. Um, like I can do a few fast runs here and there and like I have worked a lot on my vibrato, that's a technical thing, you know. Um, but at the same time, I don't consider myself a shredder by any means or a particularly highly technical player. I feel like you could find a kid in any high school anywhere who has more of an ability to shred than me. But that's also because my goal has never been to do that. I have a very particular sound that I want to achieve. And I don't need to do any wildly shreddy things to do it. Um, and so I feel like I've succeeded in moving towards my particular goals. However, someone who wants to shred like Steve Vai, if they had my abilities, would be like, eh, I don't have the technique I need. <laughs> you know? I think you'd be closer than you think. I don't yeah. know, yeah. Kent. You overestimate me. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I think at the end of the day, it's interesting to look at what musicians have stood the test of time and moved people. And some of them have very limited technical ability. Um, not even, let's just not even look at songwriters, but like specifically guitar players. B.B. King. I mean, he had a, an incredible vibrato, an incredible ability to bend, mm -hmm. but his technique was, you know, uh, not shreddy I don't know how else to say it like mm -hmm. he was so good at what he did but I'm sure he wouldn't be able to rip a Steve Vai solo but Steve Vai obviously wouldn't be able to play like BB King um, and so it's really virtuosity only matters if that is what your musical voice requires mm. long story short it's a good way to put it I yeah. think um, 
I feel like, uh, I don't know, there's like a side of it to me uh, coming from a jazz background, I think mm. is like, there's a lot of virtuosic jazz guitar players. Yeah. Um, and there's some that maybe aren't as much, but maybe like, they are, but they hide it a little bit more than others, maybe is the way I'll put it. Cause like, I love Bill Frizzell and mm. he doesn't rip solos, but to play like him is very difficult. So I would consider that style like virtuosic, but in a very different way, not right. like a technically, insane well it is but like not in the in your face like when you listen to like a joe bonamassa rip through a pentatonic scale and you're like whoa or um or like a dimebag daryl just screaming guitar solo or something yeah. and you're like wow that's like very technically difficult you know yeah um, obviously speed is typically an association people make with virtuosity so someone like joe bonamassa i think it immediately comes across as virtuosic virtuosic yeah virtuosic <laughs> because he plays very fast and so immediately you're like whoa that's fast that's technical but then yeah exactly as you're saying you know there's some guitar players where you don't realize just how masterful they are at their instrument until you try to learn what they did and you're like mm -hmm. how on earth did they do that yeah 100 percent yeah and uh, i will say i'm a huge julian lodge fan and some of his yeah. lines are just like like just like that fire that comes out, but then even the easy stuff is like, oh, that's so hard to pull off, or easy, quote unquote, yeah, yeah, less yeah. less all over the guitar neck, you know? Right, but then I, I think personally, the players that reach the most people do so because of their emphasis on expression and artistry and soul over technical ability. Like you only play flashy stuff if that's what you need to express an emotion or an emotion. That's really only the, the only word I need to use at this point. Yeah, sure. But I, yeah. I think there is like, I, <laughs> I definitely uh, hear what you're saying with like, I don't know, there is something about like one note, getting the all of mm -hmm. all of the emotion into that rather Ooh, than like, that. Yeah, rather <laughs> than like a, oh, it's gonna sound terrible clean, but like a, you know, it didn't uh, sound terrible. That it, actually sounded really good. It was okay. <laughs> um, I've done better, but the uh, you know the it's like uh, I don't know, but there is something to that though because I listen to like Alan Holdsworth and I some of his stuff I'm like yes yeah. you know um, yeah. and that is like technical to the nth degree and virtuosic to totally. the nth degree you know. Oh my god, his playing on that Tony Williams Lifetime record. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Crazy. Yeah, he's an unbelievable guitar player. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I, I think to, um, I kind of want to kind of segue this into like a, uh, the people thinking that you need natural talent to be able to play like that mm. as well. Because I think like, I think every guitar player has like, I had somebody tell me once, this was, uh, somebody was like, move your fingers. And I was like, okay, like that. Mm -hmm. And they're like, mine moved the same, you know? And like, <laughs> everybody's fingers kind of move this fast, <laughs> roughly, yeah. right? Like maybe, maybe uh, if you're like older or arthritic or something, maybe a little slower, but like, 90% of us, that's how fast our fingers move. Mm. And I'm sure Van Halen's fingers moved roughly that fast, you know? Um, and uh, But they could do such technical insanity on the guitar that I don't know if it's like a natural talent because it's, I don't know, there's a speed we all kind of have, you know? Um, and I think it's like worked out patterns that they've spent a long time on that is, gives them the ability to get to those like Mach 10 speeds, you know? Yeah, and I think uh, another way to look at it is, let's say you do have a natural ability to do this faster than the average person, because, I mean, that's not what guitar playing is. Like, imagine I apply that to the guitar. Let's let's do it together. This will be well, great. Well, I need to find a setting. Wow, that sounds great. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, we, did we lose our sound? It's not that we lost our sound. Sorry, we know where it is. We just can't access it, you know? <laughs> Sweet. Oh no, bad cable. Could it be? Mm -hmm. Quick, distract them with the joke, Kent. Wow, that's funny. A little distracting bossa nova for everybody. Oh, there we go. We're back. <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh my god. The pinch harmonics on here. That guitar is wild. It is an explorer, some people were asking in the in the chat there. Yeah, I borrowed it from um, one of the IT guys here. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, so Sweet. good. Okay, so the point I was trying to make is, let's say I can go really fast with my fingers like this. Does that sound good? No, that sounds awful. Because what you were saying about patterns and you know that learnt um, ability on the instrument, it's so much more than just being able to move your fingers fast. And I think there's so many skills that go into being a good guitar player, whatever that means, that it's very likely you have at least one strength that applies because playing guitar is physical. It's very intellectual as well, pattern-based or however you choose to look at the instrument. You know, you have to think with emotion as well. You have to think in a mathematical way. There are just so many different skills. And I think it's very likely that you have, again, at least one skill that you are better than average at sure. that would apply to guitar playing. So I think what that means is you'll have your own natural inclination and it's up to you if you want to lean into that. The way I personally see it is all of the greatest guitar players aren't the greatest at everything. Mm -hmm. They're the greatest at what they do. They have mastered their own corner of the universe. So mm -hmm. I personally think that I have pretty good groove much better than I have, um, it's much better than my ability to alternate pick. Because, you know, I'm a left-handed player playing right-handed. Mm -hmm. And as a result, my picking hand has always felt a little more awkward than my left hand. How come, how come you didn't play uh, this way? I walked into a guitar store and he said, if you play left-handed, you'll never find the guitars you want. You'll be miserable. Don't do it. Wow. But it actually ended up, I think, working out because personally, Actually, let me give a better example than groove bass playing. Um, let's talk about vibrato. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like the only technique I can say I feel quite confident I'm maybe more developed in is vibrato. And mm -hmm. you have a very nice vibrato. Thank that's you, for Ken. Sure. Yeah. I appreciate that. And it's, you know, I leaned into that because um, I know my inherent strengths. You know, I'm left handed, it just feels more natural. Mm -hmm. I should probably turn the guitar on. So quiet. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Now I can hear it. That just comes so much more naturally to me than like any alternate picking type stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I've just leaned into that and I want to center my voice around that. Um, yeah. But you also have to consider what your goals are. Like if you do want to be a shredder, or if I wanted to be a shredder, let's say, I, I'm sure I could work on it and I could get there. It just might take me a little bit longer. Yeah, totally. Uh, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah, and I think I think it's, uh, I don't know, I felt like I never really did the shredder thing. I, I felt like uh, when I was in music, music school, there were a few players that were like, whoa, look I'm out. Sure, yeah. um, and uh, so I was always like, oh, I didn't even bother. <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get there. <laughs> um, so I, but I think it's good to have a couple things in your back pocket that you can pull off that's like impressive. I think every guitar player needs one, one trick that like <laughs> is like solo time, it's like the big moment and you have this thing yeah. that you can pull out that you know is gonna turn some heads. Um, well I think even, um, of course you can totally look at it that way, but I think the way I see it is almost all guitar players I can think of have that you know, uh, head turning moment, mm -hmm. but it's more so about when you get to an emotional high part let's say you're soloing and you need to take it there, mm -hmm. you need to hopefully have something in your back pocket you can pull out where it's like, that's the expression of this like ultimate mm -hmm. emotion that needs a little bit more of a shreddy thing yeah. to express. Um, and yeah, it's really funny how when it gets down to it, almost all players have like their signature runs. Mm -hmm. And 100%. they can't, unless they're extremely technical, equally pull off other people's technical runs as as well as yep. their own, right? 100%. They're just good at what they can do really fast. Mm -hmm. Totally. <laughs> kinda cool. I think that it's really true. I think a lot of it is so worked out. Like if you watch like a Guthrie Govan, there's like a element that they can, they have enough skill that they can pivot when they want. Certainly Guthrie Govan could. Yeah, 100%, because yeah. he's like as 
the best technical guitar player. I think it's, some things are subjective in music, but Guthrie Garvin is objectively like the best technically proficient yeah, guitar player. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, you know, and I think uh, some people like to overthink it too. Like I know I used to always stress mm -hmm. out about learning some faster lines until I, uh, I was telling you about the Van Halen trick that like I think of when Van Halen used to, he didn't always do it, but it's a trick that comes up where he always mm -hmm. played like the same three frets across all six strings. Yeah. And I find if you are venturing into the world of virtuosity, that's a good way to start because you, you can almost turn your brain off at that point, you know? Mm -hmm. Like he would often do something like, um, here comes the noise from the P90s, but oh, not too bad. Oh, there we go, okay. So, <laughs> which sounds really weird on its own, but when you speed it up, it's almost like doesn't matter. So I'm just going 11, 12, 14. And I start on the fifth, yeah, like that. And just, That one string makes it sound a little funny, but when he goes fast, it almost like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's oh, almost, cool. that's almost the end run of jump, right? Like oh, of the, true. Of the end of oh, the yeah. jump solo is that. And then the, yeah, you know, 100%. The and like, that's cool. And he used to like run those patterns, and that, that was for me like the first, like, oh, I don't need to overthink this too much. No. No, and that's where I think, like, <laughs> oh, okay, maybe it's not a, Natural talent thing. Maybe I just need to like not overthink these Think things. Think smarter, not harder. Work, yeah, work smarter, not harder. That's for sure. And then he would do the like. Oh, work smarter. Yeah, sorry. Right. You kind of like yeah. do these string combos. Whoops. Yeah. And he would do it like all over the place. And it's almost like nonsensical because musically, that's not a scale, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and it's. But it sounds really cool at up to speed. Like if you listen to he does it in I'm the One, oh, he had yeah, that that lick at the end of I'm the One is 100. Is it there? Um, the SG throws me off all the time. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Now I'm gonna forget it now. But. Also, here's my hot take for a second. Mm -hmm. I'm the One is way more technical than Eruption. Think so, hey? Yeah. I feel like that first part of Eruption, like there's a part, the tappy part. But I think that solo bit right before Eruption is like insane, the way he plays it. I know I'm the one. No, I think it's insane too, but I'm the one, I don't know. It's hard to play that groove correctly. Yeah, the groove is pretty crazy. Um, but even just like the opening lick in the in the intro, like the very first like symmetrical fast thing he does, mm -hmm. even that is like, what the heck? That's yeah, crazy. 100%. I don't know, I, I stick by, I think I'm the one is more technical. Like, don't get me wrong, Eruption is incredible and quite highly technical. Mm -hmm. I think I'm the one, I think it's more technical. That's, mm. that's all I'm gonna say. Hot take, what does everybody think in the in the yeah. chat, if you know, um, both yeah. off the first Van Halen record. Mm -hmm. so, um, and then there's also Spanish Fly, which is, yeah, someone was mentioning yeah, that's that That's a good one too. That's another cool one. For those of you who haven't heard it, it's like eruption on a nylon string. It's very cool. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're both pretty amazing. I see that in the chat, I agree. Yeah. Both, both tunes are good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah, I, I would, uh, I don't know. I feel like they're they're both hard in their own ways. Yeah. Okay. That's I would a say fair that. way to put it. I think I would say I'm the one is so hard to get that groove correct. Like that right yeah. hand thing is like that groove thing he does, and it's, it shows up in a lot of his music. I like boogie yeah. guitar thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And with like nitrous going, you know, it's just like so fast. It's so good though. Yeah. Um, yeah totally. Um, All right. Well, I think uh, keep sharing how you feel in the chat. I think. It's very interesting to think about this question because again, it, it inevitably leads you to the big questions about you know what music is even about, what music is even for, anyways, you know. And music to me is a language. I'm biased towards the music that I like, mm -hmm. as you are too, as every person is. And well, that's because all the music I like is the best. Yeah, <laughs> said every person ever. <laughs> exactly. And you know, I really love soul, um, a slow beautiful band with vibrato mm -hmm. will do more for me than a crazy technical solo, but there's absolutely a place for me to listen to that music and love it. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I turn on, it's such a funny album name, but like Erotic Cakes by Guthrie Goman. Oh yeah. And I'm like, oh my great, God, great record. this is wild, you know, like uh, Waves, Yeah. that last solo where it's just like this completely fluid, incredible, mm -hmm. extremely fast run that goes on for like, 15 seconds, maybe more, I don't know. I, I have no concept of time. Yeah. I have no concept of time when I'm listening to it because time stands still, because it's beautiful. <laughs> I 
Guys, I feel a migraine coming on. I can't think straight. <laughs> Whew. Bring me back to my calm place. Guys, if you could pray for anything right now, even in a secular way, world peace and for my migraine to not get yes. worse. I'm yeah. not in the mood for a migraine right now. I'm just That's gonna fair. say that. Um, all these bright lights probably are not helping. No, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> um, Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I want to touch a little bit more on the natural talent side of things. Sure. Do we need natural talent or not? I feel like uh, a lot of guitar players who maybe learn a little later in their life maybe mm -hmm. get discouraged. I hear often hear from students like, oh, I'm not naturally gifted, so I'm going to, you know, I, that's why this doesn't won't work or doesn't sound good. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I... I used to say that stuff when I was younger, and I had a teacher be very blunt with me. Uh, with like, you're setting you you're setting the outcome up if you say things like that. Yeah. Like you're like, yeah, I'm not naturally talented, so I'll never be able to play it. Well, then you're never going to be able to play. Well, it. yeah. Let me let me quote my mom for a second, who's a psychologist. Um, you know, growth mindset versus fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. It's hugely important if you go into something thinking you already know the outcome, you'll make that happen. One hundred percent. And that could. I mean, typically that's that's uh, a negative mindset to have um, if you want to succeed because, mm -hmm. you know, you will be faced with challenges when you're learning anything, especially an instrument. It's mm -hmm. challenging to do. And you need to be open to failure, failure, making mistakes, because you need that to learn, you know? You mm -hmm. need to know what not to do. Yeah. And you need to figure out how to overcome those obstacles because everyone faces them mm -hmm. but That's some true. people go into it thinking they're already going to fail so they face those obstacles that already skews your perspective so you see people who are good and you think i bet they never struggled like i did i'm sure they did but you know you're choosing to look at it in a much more negative light so then you just kind of assume that it's not meant for you but again everyone goes through those struggles and you need to go into it knowing you're going to fail and knowing you're going to struggle, but knowing that everyone has and all good players have overcome that just because they love it and they played a lot and they practiced and they had a mindset where they just wanted to grow and learn. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, my, I, I had a teacher that once said that they loved when they made a mistake because mm -hmm. they knew exactly what they needed to practice that day. Mm -hmm. So they would start start their practice session off by just playing whatever song they wanted to work on. And the second they messed up, that was what they worked on for that day. And that's how you know exactly what to practice. It answer, a lot of us go like, I don't know what to practice. Well, try playing. You, you try playing a song and you go like, well, I can't play that scale run correctly or I can't play this chord shape correctly. Yeah. Well, there you go. You've figured out I need to work on that today, you know? And it puts it all in context of a tune. I find it uh, totally. really, I don't know, it helped me out thinking that way. And then you're also like less afraid of mistakes. I've almost am like, what am I going to work on today? Where am I going to mess up? Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> Great. Okay. String skipping's not happening today. Okay. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> you know, um, I find yeah. uh, I find that can really help with the mindset of that. Yeah. Also, I love uh, someone said that guitar looks massive on you, Ayla. Oh yeah, this is a is actually a giant guitar, large guitar. I mean, I'm not the biggest person, but I'm holding a pretty large guitar. I think it's the the the. I don't know what that is. The spike out of there. I don't know what I don't that know what is. To call this. Yeah, that. this is the explorer part. The explorer this is part. The of explorative the, part of the guitar. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. explorative part of this explorer. <laughs> That's where it got its name from. <laughs> I don't. I don't quote us on that. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely don't. don't. Um, Actually, just quote Kent on that. <laughs> yeah, great. I'll just. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it, those guitars are pretty sweet. They're like. Yeah. I always think of uh, the first scene the, uh, in um, School of Rock. I was just thinking. That's about where that. I think about it. Where he stage dives totally. into nobody. Oh, yeah. that's rough. Yeah. But look at Jack Black in that movie. Uh, he starts the movie with an epic failure. He stage dives and there's no one to catch him. It's supposed to show you that his life is crumbling. But by the end of the movie, he's inspired so many people. He's, he's flying high su with success. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> I'm gonna, wow, we're coming. We're, the migraine I was is coming on for that. very fast. I was, I was really waiting for that and see where that went. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was incredible. I couldn't have said that any better. Uh, uh, you probably could have. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, and I think we uh, also tied into the guitario as well. We also mm -hmm. have 
lots of great lessons to figure out. Like, you know, when you when you do want to get more virtuosic, we have a great coach feature from Dean Lamb yeah. that teaches you all that stuff to get more in, insane on the guitar, I guess. he's pretty insane on the he guitar. He is pretty uh, yeah. technically proficient on the instrument, that's for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, and there's lots of great lessons to help you out. Um, and uh, any of our members, you can always reach out to us at any time. Um, if you're trying to, if you feel like you've hit some sort of barrier, and a lot of us get there and you go like, yeah. ah, you just want to play a little bit faster, but I just can't seem to do it, you know? Um, and it, it just kind of is a little, I don't know, uh, there's always, there's something to help you for sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Amazing. Should we start going into some questions? I was just going to say that. Yeah. I like the person, somebody asked if we should turn this amp to 11. I like that. I, saw I, that. I always love a good spinal tap reference. Yeah. Can't amazing. go wrong with that. Um, looks like we just have a couple members or questions in the members area. Yeah. Um, Take the first, uh, or I'll take the first one. Uh, Mike T. Rock Sky. I like that. Um, <laughs> do you think learning guitar has a steeper learning curve than other instruments like drums, bass, keys, uh, singing, etc.? Mm. What do you think? I think mm, everything has its own learning curve for sure. I think the way I've seen it is it's, of course, very hard to make the drums sound great and the bass sound great. You know, like there's a huge noticeable difference between the true masters of that instrument and, you know, other people who are still learning because their touch on the instrument is just so refined and so intentional and they have so much control over what they're doing. That being said, I think most people could pick up either of those instruments. I mean, probably not pick up the drums. Pick up drumsticks and a bass and make them sound relatively okay. Um, an extreme example of that would be the piano, where, again, of course, true masters have an incredible touch on the instrument, but you play a key and it sounds... The, the note comes out. The note comes out, you know? But mm -hmm. on the guitar, it's very easy to make it sound really bad. Mm -hmm. And there is a huge amount of growth you have to overcome with building your touch on the instrument, because um, it's a lot more noticeable when it's not developed on the guitar at the beginning. Yeah. And also the physical aspect. It's pretty painful a lot of the time to put your fingers on metal strings like this. 100%. And you have to build calluses and yeah, that's that's a struggle for sure. Yeah, I would agree. I think uh, with guitar, uh, I think the learning curve is very steep, but it, and, and then you plateau almost. And then the last, like when you want to break that like intermediate and go further, that's like insanely hard too. I find that yeah. it's like, kind of is like a really steep and then like another really steep curve up. Um, mm -hmm. Like Steve Vai versus all the really technical people who go through Musicians Institute. Yeah, totally. Or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and like, I think um, I, guitar is definitely one of the trickier instruments, I think, to get started with. I, I think to lower, like entry level instruments for, they're getting a lot better, but I think for a long time weren't doing people any favors mm -hmm. with like being poorly set up or uh, maybe they sat in the shop forever so the strings are super old, the action's gone really high. Um, and I think um, that's getting better. I notice entry level instruments are like way better than they have been. But like when I started, a hundred dollar guitar was like brutal. Like, you can get it in tune <laughs> and like you could barely press down to make a note. And, and that doesn't help when you're already struggling and already struggling, yeah. right? <laughs> so I, you know, I think, um, yeah, I think there's other factors at play too that maybe uh, make it harder off the top, you know, of learning of learning the uh, guitar. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would think it's pretty tough. Um, I think true mastery of any instrument is very difficult regardless of what you play. But I think that just to like make some sounds that don't sound terrible, I think guitar is one of the harder yeah. ones. And the last level of true mastery that people don't talk about is if you're able to do a, a backflip while holding your instrument. Right, I'm still working on that myself. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the final level. Um, until you reach that, you really are, you're not quite there. Yeah, but you have to turn the amp to 11 first. Yeah, Otherwise oh, it doesn't true. Work. Yeah, there's, there are a couple of steps, you'll figure it out. Uh, <laughs> anyways, next question. <laughs> what exactly makes someone a shredder? Is it speed above else? You have to live in LA for five years, right? I think that's part of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Musicians Institute. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I, it's mostly speed. I, there's a, a style of playing though that I think is like associated with those shredders. Like I, yeah. Like I, when I think of uh, Joe Satriani or Steve Vai or like Dimebag Daryl or like Guthrie Govan, there's like something that happens and like I think of immediately like speed and fluidity and articulation. Like yeah. they can play at those high speeds and it's extremely fluid and extremely articulate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
Mm -hmm. But you can, I, I've heard that word also used to describe very different aspects of music. So I, I don't think there's a set definition, but I think, yeah, usually that's what people are talking about. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. I think technical proficiency more than anything. I think yeah, well, everything that encompasses and... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, Shining Soul in the Wild Headbanger, what is your favorite Stevie Ray Vaughan tune? Okay, three, two, one. Crossfire. Lenny. Okay, I, that's fair too. I think that was the first one. Came. I like Lenny a lot. I, yeah, for me, I think Lenny is really beautiful. Um, I love Tightrope too. Ooh, oh, the yeah. last solo where he's like bending mm -hmm. that one note gradually, um, and it sounds like his guitar is crying. And oh, imagining yeah. he's bending on like 13s is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then there's a rude mood. That one. That one's oh, pretty yeah. crazy. Oh yeah, I was thinking about that one too. That that's one's pretty a awesome. Pretty awesome one. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna change my answer. I think rude mood is one of my favorites. Okay, like just sure. something that's just like when you come like. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, the groove is insane. And then there's that scuttle button. Thing, which oh, I don't even think I can play, so I don't know why I would unmute my guitar. What is it? I love when he hits that chord. In the E7? Yeah, that's such a crazy Everyone tune. plays that lick wrong, but I also don't know how to play it right. I just know that they're doing it wrong, including me, by the way. Yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah. Great tune, though. I'm going to work on it, guys. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, and then doing that on 13s, too. Yeah. Also crazy. Pretty crazy. Um, amazing. Um, all right. Keep going. Uh, what exact? Uh, nope, we answered that one. Uh, Koi505, <laughs> how does one become a shredder? Do you practice scales more than the chords itself? Uh, yeah. you quit your job and only play guitar and maybe do like DoorDash on the side. Yeah, but would you be practicing scales or chords? That's the I think, question. I think those guys practice an insane amount. Yeah, everything. Like, probably. I think that's a common thread yeah. with all of them is they're like, oh, I practice like like 28 hours a day. So it's like an insane amount, you know? Um, but I yeah. think, uh, how do I put it? I think a lot of them practice scales and they do very symmetrical scales. Like, it's very mm -hmm. common to have like three note per string. Uh, we have a lesson in that in Guitario, uh, three note per string scales, and uh, just general technical drills. So whether those are like, um, you know, just like work something to work your fingers, something to work your picking. Uh, they do a lot of sweet picking, a lot of arpeggios. I think they work on chords that way. Like yeah, true. So breaking up chords into individual notes. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure they also are to a degree working on chords, but actually, yeah, I, it probably varies. It depends what style of music you're playing. Like a jazz player, I'm sure, would be working a lot on mm -hmm. chords. A yeah. jazz shredder, let's say. Yeah, totally. But yeah, I suppose it's not necessarily as crucial for certain types of shredding. But and even then, you listen to like Steve Vai, and they're those really luscious, enormous spread mm -hmm. voicings. Yeah. And like Eric Johnson. Oh my God, I love the harmony that he uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's yeah. got some really cool stuff going on. Yeah. I think... Uh, uh, I lost my train of thought. Um, I think it's, I don't know. I feel like, like I think the chords are more worked on with the like sweet picking when you get into that world. Um, but I think they do kind of work on everything equally. Yeah. You know, like it's I, the ones I've spoken to. I remember what I was gonna say. I I when I was in music school, we had a clinic with Alan Holdsworth, and Alan came with his band, mm -hmm. and we got to hang out with him for a couple hours. Alice. And he um, he basically was like only spoke about scales. He was like, even his chords were scales in his mind because he mm -hmm. like he just played X amount of notes from the scale he was wanting to play together. Right. That was how he thought of it. And um, so I think for all of them, maybe the worlds collide. I think they just have a lot of fretboard mastery might be the way yeah, to do it. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's true. I think that's a pretty apt way to put it. Cool. I try to be apt. And you are. <laughs> Last question from, from David on our studio team. Can, if I'm a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, could I become Shredder? Oh, that's what he meant TMNT. That's funny. I used to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Me too. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think, well, no, if you are a turtle, you wouldn't be Shredder. Oh, true. So, no, if you were a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, you could not become Shredder. Oh, man. Sorry. Um. Oh. <laughs> How about an adult mutant Ninja Turtle? Was that... Does that change the situation at all? Probably maybe, not. I don't know. I don't know, guys. What about a, a teenage mutant ninja tadpole? Maybe could become a shredder. A child mutant ninja tadpole. <laughs> turtles don't come from tadpoles. <laughs> no, turtles come from tadpoles. 
Not shredders. But frogs come from tadpoles. Are they frogs? Oh, no. I don't think turtles come from frogs. Oh, do turtles come from little turtles? <laughs> yeah, I think. No, I mean little turtles come from big turtles. <laughs> Not little turtles coming from. What came first, the little turtle or the big turtle? The big turtle. Oh, I mean the little, I mean the, oh my God. <laughs> Whoa. Um, <laughs> this got very profound. <laughs> We have a, another question from David, which says, my primary instrument is piano. Any suggestions on how I can try a backflip with a grand piano? I feel ready. Um, okay, so anytime you watch a cartoon and there's someone walking and they unfortunately get crushed by a, a falling piano, that's what you want to avoid. So you just want to watch a bunch of those and just take into account everything that led them to that point. And reverse engineer and write them out on a list and do the exact opposite of that. And you should avoid um, a situation where a piano falls on you and you should be able to successfully complete a backflip with the piano. Wow. Yeah. Ayla's gonna be doing a backflip course in guitar, in uh, um, Musora. Yeah, no big deal, guys. Yeah. With, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> break my spine on camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should get to our giveaways here before we run out of time. Yes. Um, we're going to give away uh, annual membership yeah. on the YouTube chat for one of our lovely YouTube uh, watchers right now. So uh, I like our I like our quiz yeah. thing. It works really well. I agree. We have to think of a question. Uh, let's see. Who was the shredder that Kent said is objectively the most <laughs> objectively <laughs> the best player <laughs> of all time? We talked about him a couple times during the stream. Not Hendrix. Hendrix Someone said Hendrix. I love Teenage Hendrix. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Nope, yes. not the, not Who would be the best guitar player of the four? Not but he's great too. Yeah. Hendrix is great too. Okay, these are not the answers. Yngwie, Guys, yeah. this is the person that Kent said is objectively yeah, yeah, yeah. the most <laughs> technical player. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I saw okay. it. Judd, Judd 511. You yeah. did it. Guthrie Govan, objectively the most technically proficient according guitar player. to Kent, and apparently... I mean, it's objective, so I guess it's it's according hard to truth. science. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's one of the hard truths of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Congrats, Judd. 511, that's awesome. Can Yay. you shoot us an email at team at guitario.com? So it's T-E-A-M at guitario.com, and we'll get you set up with that membership. Um, and uh, we're excited to have you over in the members area. Welcome. Ooh. So exciting. Awesome. All okay. right, I like Ed Sheeran was in there. <laughs> Ed Sheeran is objectively the most technically proficient oh, guitar player. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Cool. Uh, Dude knows awesome. how to write a hit. We'll say that. Yeah. You, yeah. He's making. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guitar. We're giving away this guitar. Let's just go over it one more time. Like uh, this instrument, this uh, Enya N E X G. Really cool from Enya. It is, uh, again, that carbon fiber, carbon fiber guitar. Not wood, carbon fiber, super interesting. And not carbon filter. Not carbon I said. filter. I want to be clear, that's what the notes said. And I read it and I'm like, that's, I feel like it's carbon fiber, but I'll read what's there. Yeah. Oh man, that's and embarrassing. Which comes in four colors. We're giving away the white one here. Um, so thanks to Enya for sending that to us. Again, with that built in tuner, uh, Bluetooth speaker that you can see here on the side, super cool. Uh, different effects. What did we hear at the beginning? Delay. Ottawa, um, there's some reverb that was on there. Super cool, yeah. a really fun Some overdrive instrument. built into it. Yeah, some overdrive in there. And this sound. I mean, you can't put a price on that. So You surely can't. Yeah, and we do. We will have a link to the uh, Enya bundle. If you did want to get it for yourself below, um, you can definitely check that out, it, which comes with the uh, Hi-Fi monitor, earphones, travel case, wireless microphone, guitar strap, and the charger cable for this. Super cool. Wild. Yeah, wild. And uh, you can also check out their ukuleles too. They're pretty sweet. So here we go. Uh, let's think of another question. Um, we'll make it a guitar related one. I wanted to do a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, but <laughs> we'll do, um, uh, let me see. We're thinking, mm, we're thinking, 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 thinking. Mm. I kind of want to ask what the if people remember the song that we played at the beginning. Who wrote that? But that's pretty tough. That's a hard one. Let's let's start it's with pretty, that, and then buy us time we'll to maybe think of think of a better question. Yes. Okay, J Ayla and I jammed on a uh, song, a real song, not just an open jam. Uh, if you know the name of that song in the members area, throw that tune. Yeah, that one. It's a real obscure tune. So we'll see how this goes. It's not obscure if you know your 70s jazz fusion. Hint, hint, wink, wink, wink. 
<laughs> yeah, I think we're... Okay, we need a new no question. Clue. Yeah, I think it's, it's a little guys. tubes, a little tubes guys. here. Okay, the answer was um, Chameleon by Herbie Hancock off of... Uh, Headhunters, right? Headhunters. Is it off Headhunters? Or is did that? he play no. with the Headhunters? I can't remember. I can't remember what album. That's I should, terrible. I should know. Yeah, what else? Watermelon Man is on that record. Yeah. It's a um, great record. Okay, let's think of a different question. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, what did we talk about today? We talked about virtuosity. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what's the what is the model name of the guitar Ayla is playing? Oh, nice one. Oh, the album is Headhunters. It is off Headhunters. Yeah, I thought so. Laura, Lucas Lee, nice. you won. Congratulations, Lucas. That's awesome. Uh, you have won this uh, Next G uh, Enya guitar, or Enya XG guitar. I always get that backwards in my brain. <laughs> um, congratulations. Shoot me an email at kent at guitario.com, uh, and we will get this guitar shipped off to you. Uh, it comes with a little charger stand, uh, all, the, all the super fun stuff. So shoot me an email. We'll get this sent off to you. Congratulations. So cool. Woo! Uh, it comes amazing. with a guitar, too. Comes, yeah, we'll send you the guitar as well. Yes, for, I'll, I'll go and do right to your house. You're going to love it. Super cool. And we're sending you the guitar as well. <laughs> Guys, the migraine's coming. Oh no. Well, <laughs> that should be our cue. We want to thank everybody for joining us today on thank the you. guitar riff. Uh, always love seeing you here. What are we uh, what are we talking about next week? What are we what we got? Next week we are talking about uh, guitar body types. Ooh. Solid body. Hollow body. Semi hollow body. Semi hollow body. Yeah, we're going through all yeah. of those. Why we prefer one over the other. Are they are they even different? You know? Cool. We're, we're gonna find out. Question. We're gonna bring in a hollow body, a semi hollow, a solid guitar. We're gonna try them all out next to each other, see what we yeah. think. Uh, see what you think, most importantly. We'll see you here uh, next time at yeah. 2 p.m. on Wednesday at the Guitar Riff, and we'll be having some more giveaways. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, and we'll see y'all later. All of you on YouTube who wanna come hang out in the members area. Guitario.com slash trial. Come hang out. We'd love to have you over on the other side, the cooler side yeah. of, of the guitar. So should we jam a bit? Let's do it. We'll jam jam yeah. our way out. I like the comment. Someone said, Ayla broke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going through it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> You're <What>? right. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Is I'm that just, we're jamming? No. That, that second section always messes me up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's do... You choose. Okay. Okay, same progression. Yeah.